Brian, let's talk about the sale of a primary residence. Let's say that I bought a home for $100,000 20 years ago and it is worth a million dollars today. What sort of tax am I going to be liable for if and when I sell that home? Yeah, I'm glad we had this because I get asked this all the time because most of my clients own a home and at some point in their life they're going to sell that home. And they, they often uh, mix up other tax rules around that. They, I heard X, and I'm like, no, that's not exactly the case. So some of the things I hear is, uh, okay, I'm, I'm selling for a million dollars. I'm going to buy a replacement house and, for a million dollars, and I don't have to pay the tax, right? No. That rule went away with the Tax Reform Act of 1986. So all these years later, almost 40 years later, I keep hearing people say, that's still the rule, right? No, it's not. It doesn't matter if you buy another home. It doesn't matter. Well, I heard about your DSTs. Can I do a Section 1031 exchange? No. Section 1031 exchanges are only for investment real estate. Oh. Okay, so if I sell my house for a million, I paid 100000 for it, am I going to pay tax on $900,000 gain? That depends. Have you lived in it at least 24 months out of the last five years? Yeah, I'm living in it now. I'm selling it now. I've lived there 20 years. Okay. That $900,000 gain, are you married? Yes, I'm married. Okay. That gain is, you can exclude 500000 of that gain. So you will have, of your 900, 500 you don't pay tax on, but you will pay tax on 400. Oh, and the next person might say, no, I'm not married. Okay, you get a $250,000 exclusion. Okay, so your gain will be the 900 minus 250,000. So the rest will be gain. Well, what if I buy another house and live in it for two years and it goes way up and I sell it? You get another 250,000. You can keep using this rule every two years if you want. You can keep moving from house to house so they go up in value. 250 to 500,000 can be excluded from gain. So there's a lot of nuances here depending on you're married, you're single, how long have you lived there. Uh, some people, one of the, the things that they get caught on is they have a house, it has a big gain, let's say they're married and the gain is $500,000. And they, they think, well, I'm going to buy another house, but I'm going to keep our old house as a rental. Okay? So they keep the rental for two years, they rent it out, and then they sell it. Great. They can take their $500,000 exclusion on the gain. But let's say they rent it out for three years and a day. Well, now they haven't lived in it two of the last five years. It's no longer their principal residence. They've blown their exclusion for 500000 So there is a lot of planning. I see this happen over and over. I think people think they're just going to buy up or they're going to turn into rental and be fine. Think before you act. Think about what the taxation is on this. Uh, finally, I will say, they'll say, how can I get out of paying the tax? And I say, well, you can die and get step up basis. No one will ever pay any tax, but I don't usually recommend that as a tax planning uh, opportunity. Let's say that someone has a vacation home in another state. Let's say that they bought a home in Arizona. They go there during the winter months. They're snowbirds. They may spend four or five months there. How does this apply to that? Well, I'm glad you brought that up because we've talked about investment real estate. I can do 1031 exchanges in active or passive uh, real estate using DSTs. We've talked about your principal residence. We can get an exclusion on the gain of 250000 or up to 500000 if you're married. Now there's this one asset category right in between there. It's not an investment property and it's not your primary residence. It's the vacation home. That's probably got the worst tax attributes. I can't get an exclusion when I sell it from the gain and I can't do a 1031 exchange if I use it personally because it's not considered an investment piece of real estate. So it's kind of in that tweener zone that really doesn't have a whole lot of tax advantages. You can plan to say, okay, I'm not going to live in it for a period of time. I am going to make it an investment property and I'm going to do a 1031 exchange. Or conversely, I'm going to move into it someday and make it my primary residence. But as it stands, your vacation home doesn't really get any uh, tax benefits. Brian, thanks for that great information. Very valuable.